So if certain rumors are to be believed, and I want to stress that wording, rumors, then a certain fishy person is going to be coming back to the DCEU. When I say a fishy person, I'm not talking about Mira either. I'm talking about their actions toward a certain pirate. Yeah. Now, interestingly, Ezra Miller was also named in this. And before you think, well, poor Ezra Miller, because of certain things that have gone on, Ezra was all down with removing Johnny Depp from other movies. In fact, in 2018, he sounded off about that. And yeah, we'll cover that too. So hey there, now for some reason, you haven't heard about a case between a pirate and a harpy, wait, I mean a mermaid, I get my creatures mixed up, definitely not calling anybody a harpy. Well, first of all, welcome back to planet Earth, must have been a nice trip. And secondly, you should definitely, and I mean definitely, catch up on what's going on, because quite a few people seem to agree that this person, they should not be connected to Aquaman 2, as in 477,348 people at this time. Now, to give that number some perspective, because we see huge numbers online all the time, the population of Washington, D.C., it's only 713,000 people. So more people have signed a petition to remove A.H. from Aquaman 2 than live in the 20th most populated city in the United States of America. This message, by the way, has been brought to you by the United States Census 2020. Fill out those cards or you know what's coming down the pike, you. Yeah, Washington, D.C. And if you read why people are filling this out, it has nothing to do with the character on the screen, but it has plenty to do with what this person has done off the screen and what D.C. supposedly stands against. Now, with all those voices speaking in unison, you would think most companies would want to listen, but AT&T specifically, because AT&T, they are in financial disarray. They need your money. And yet, if reports again are to be believed, you not only have one controversial figure coming back to the DCEU, but they're going to be joined by another controversial figure that was embroiled in controversy for the same kind of stuff that AH was, only doing that to a fan. Now, you remember that thing about AT&T and having problems with money? Well, maybe that's the reason that this is happening, because they've had so many problems with the DCEU and having any success out there. Well, it's been few and far between. Quote, even though the shared universe has existed for seven years at this point, seven years, by the way, can you freaking believe that? I mean, that is a lengthy amount of time to have so many bombs. The DC EU is still trying to fully establish its roster of marquee heroes, with Jason Momoa's Aquaman and Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, the only two members of the original Justice League lineup that are poised to leave their own multi-film franchises. Now, as far as flops and other problems are concerned, look at this next portion here, and it really puts the DCEU and its problems into perspective. Ben Affleck's Batman never got a solo movie before he was rebooted. Why? Because Batman with Ben Affleck? Yeah, mm -hmm, let's just forget that. Superman is only contracted for cameos after Henry Cavill uh, finally signed a new deal. Why is that? Well, see the other portion and see Superman as well. Many people thought Cyborg was done before it was announced Ray Fisher was returning for The Flash. And if you want to look up Ray Fisher right now and controversy going on online, oh, what a mess there. The majority of Suicide Squad's cast are being swept under the rug for James Gunn's follow-up. You know why that is? Well, because that was an absolute mess too. And Birds of Prey bombing at the box office was a major setback for Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. So taking that into perspective, there's already been a huge amount of turnover in terms of personnel. And based on the negative publicity surrounding Ezra Miller and A.H., it was heavily rumored that neither of them would be asked to return as Barry Allen and Mira respectively, with Warner Brothers not keen on the idea of two of their highest profile projects being the subject of bad buzz. Bad buzz is an interesting way to describe that stuff, too, considering it seems like the understatement of the century. If you read this, for example, Ezra Miller, he hasn't made a peep since what now? 
Oh, a video of him doing something terrible to a fan went viral several months ago. Like he hasn't had any counter to it, because what can he really say? While A.H. is still in the midst of her latest legal battle against ex-husband Johnny Depp, and we know how that's going, with petitions demanding that both of them be fired from the DCEU for their transgressions, gaining thousands of signatures, which we discussed. Despite that, it goes on to say, a new report claims that the studio will be keeping the actors on board for the foreseeable future. Now, I'm going to talk about a few things associated with that rumor in just a moment, but before I do that, I want to note this. Regardless of whether that is truth or fiction, one thing that we do know that is abundantly clear is that Ezra Miller and A.H., they're slated to participate in DC Fandom. So if you haven't heard of DC Fandom, by the way, this is from their website about DC Fandom. The first of its kind, 24-hour global event, DC Fandom celebrates the incredible DC multiverse in a massive fan-first experience. This virtual event will allow fans on all seven continents to interact with DC superheroes and supervillains like never before. The unprecedented gathering will offer attendees an inside look at the past, present, and future DC content through panels, behind-the-scenes access, user-generated experiences, big reveals and exclusives from across the DC landscape, including the brand's biggest films, live-action and animated TV series, games, and comics. Basically, this is a convention to replace all of the conventions that have been canceled, and they don't want anything to come in and ruin it, so it's kind of interesting that they would bring these people in. Now, as far as incentives to bring these folks back, I mean, A.H. is always brought up with Aquaman 2018 and the fact that there's a huge monetary incentive to make this movie work. I mean, if you look at the numbers behind this, too, the production budget for the movie was about $160 million. If you double that with advertisement, you're talking about $320 million to break even. And if you look at the money that this made, domestic box office alone makes $335 million, which is quite a bit, but the international box office on this is absolutely insane. At $808,904,713, that leaves you with a worldwide box office of $1.143 billion, almost $1.144 billion, and that doesn't even include your home market performance with DVD or Blu-rays or anything else that's included in that. Now, Shill Media, they grabbed onto this point, too. With people like Scott Mendelson, we're talking about a contributor for Forbes, putting out articles like this. Box office, A.H.'s Aquaman has outgrossed every Johnny Depp film. And the way that they put this together, well, it's an attack on Johnny Depp, but it's a duplicitous way, too, to promote this idea and to keep her on board. There was some outcry at last year's SDCC when Warner Brothers had Johnny Depp essentially surprise the audience in order to promote Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, right as his ex-wife A.H. was in the same hall to promote Aquaman. But come what may, not only did Aquaman vastly outgross that movie with $158 million domestic and $650 million worldwide, but the DC flick has now outgrossed all five Pirates of the Caribbean movies. It gives their numbers, and Alice in Wonderland giving that too. Now what's deceptive about that is it makes it sound like it outgrossed all of them combined, and that's not what it's saying there. It just made more money than that film. It throws in other films, too. And what's insane about that, again, is it's utilized like A.H. is the leading person on it. And this person, they are basically making the point that you can't get rid of them. So, shill media, they will definitely fight that fight. Now, the more conspiratorial side of me got thinking about this last night, wondering what about the connection between Warner Brothers and TMZ after they copyright claimed something that I had 
put up. See, I'd never quite thought about TMZ and the connection to Warner Brothers. But if you think about TMZ, they have been fighting this fight where basically they said, Johnny Depp, he is guilty of this. We're going to put out salacious headlines and he needs to disprove that. Hmm. Now, if you look at that connection and then you think about who's connected to their movies, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Regardless of the why, people are questioning their involvement. Maybe that's a little bit of that what goes around comes around. After all, we know what's come from A.H. And look at what's come from Ezra Miller. When I asked Miller if Rawlings said anything to him about Depp appearing in the film, talking about the Harry Potter film in 2018, where people are trying to cancel him, and this is a, an interview in 2018, 2018. He replies, no, none of us were consulted. None of us knew. So we didn't get to say. Miller has an even tougher time answering my follow-up question on whether he was fine about co-starring with Depp. Look, I bring forth my work to this job, and I do the best that I can. That that would have been a good uh, answer, right? But it continues. After a lengthy pause, Miller continues diplomatically. I would say that literally every single aspect of my reality, inclusive of a lot of things that are not fine with me, are fine with me. It's amazing how far the banner of all good can extend. So, I'm even good with the things that I'm not good with. Yeah, you see how that reads. It says, hmm, I don't really want to be here working with him, but I am. So that, it was okay with removing people. And if you're okay with that, well then, you can see how maybe, just maybe when you're targeted, people, they might not have a lot of sympathy. I don't know, but you tell me, what do you think about this. I'm curious. So to close this out, I want to mention our comic book, Another Case for the Littlest Umbrella. Link is in the description, and it's in demand right now, meaning while we finalize it, you can still pick it up. We need your help getting the word out still, because no one else will talk about it in that, say, comic media or with comic pros, because you know what? We're supposed to be the bad guys. But as I say every time, we don't need them. We need you. So help out if you would, and thank you in advance. Also, thank you for being here. Thank you for making this stuff work. I can't say that enough. The channel had just bypassed 95,000 subscribers. So thank you for that. We keep marching on. It is amazing to me. And you, you make that work. So again, thank you. I appreciate you. And we'll see you soon.